Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm married to S. Bernard. C News is live at noon. Disappointing news for Trinidad and Tobago in the judo event at Rio as Christopher George lost his first and only match this morning. He went up against Yan Nain So of Myanmar and lost 2-0. Despite losing, I'm sure he did as proud as he was the first ever athlete to represent this country in judo. The 32-year-old quit his job as an engineer to pursue his Olympic dream and over the years has quietly racked up victories across the region. Trinidad and Tobago's top Olympic swimmer George Bovell dives into the Rio pool today, hoping to capture gold as he seeks to capitalize on his multiple successes in four previous Olympics. The country's first five-time Olympian is in action at noon in the men's 50-meter freestyle heats. There's speculation, though, whether this could be the last Olympic Games for the 33-year-old. This from the sports minister, who suggested on Tuesday that 20-year-old Dylan Carter could be poised to take over as the country's number one swimmer. Bovell is a two-time World Championship bronze medalist, four-time Olympian, and is the Caribbean region's most successful swimmer. In uh, some other news, obstetrician Dr. Lacrim Bodo is cautioning men who have contracted Zika uh, who intend to travel to a country which has an outbreak of the Zika virus. Speaking on CTV's Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Bodo said the virus can stay in the semen of males for up to six months after contracting Zika and they must be cautious if fathering a child during that period. You're also aware that if a woman has contracted Zika, she should wait for at least eight weeks um, eight to ten weeks before she becomes pregnant. Also, it's important to note that if in pregnancy Zika can be transmitted sexually as well. So the point being is, is that if the woman is pregnant, her husband travels to an area that has Zika or contracts Zika and has unprotected intercourse with his pregnant wife, it can be transmitted during pregnancy. Dr. Bodo explained that the Zika virus can be detected in a child from 18 to 20 weeks into pregnancy. However, he said if it does not show up immediately, it does not mean the baby cannot contract it. I think you might be at risk throughout the pregnancy. Within the first three months, within the first trimester, if you contract Zika, you'd be more at risk. Um, in terms of the diagnosis, it's made by an ultrasound scan. Um, most pregnant women uh, supposed to have what's called an anomaly scan, which is a scan really to detect any sort of fetal or abnormalities in the baby. The Ministry of Health continues to call on citizens to be proactive against the spread of the Zika virus by cleaning up their environment. At a mosquito eradication exercise in the community of Boisea Village, Maraval, Specialist Medical Officer of the Insect Vector Control Division, Dr. Roshan Parisram, said spraying is only one part of addressing the Zika virus and a source reduction is needed. With a temporary solution, spraying is really for the adult section of the mosquitoes, so it will last only a couple of weeks. If there's breeding in a house and we spray today, within about two weeks there will be a, a full return of adult population. So what we need to do is, is focus our efforts on the sources, reducing our sources, which is basically cleaning up our environment. One resident told us purchasing insect repellent has been high on his priority list as the spread of the Zika virus continues to affect the country. For me to budget for mosquito repellents when I go to the grocery now. And the thing about it, including the pharmacy, because the, the medica medication that you get from the pharmacy to help you. But it does not help for more than a short period. Between 100 to 300 students drop out of the University of the West Indies in a given year. As a result, the Guild of Students is supporting the decision taken by the Minister of Education to get money back uh, that is spent on them. UWE Guild President McCasey Peters says the majority of these students are given uh, required to withdraw a request if they fail to maintain the required grade point average and most times they do not return to complete their education. It doesn't mean that the university is failing them, it means that the students are not performing well. And if the students are not performing well, therefore the university has no other choice to ensure that that student goes back home and take a year, a year, a year away from the university, right? And while that student is away for one for one year, most of them go and work, right? Most of them go and work, and a lot of them sometimes don't even come back. When a student gets the RTW, they are required to repay the government before they're accepted back 
into the university. In a year GPN, we try to withdraw means that yeah, your GPN would have obviously fall below 2.0. Previously it would have fall below uh, 1.0. So once it falls below there, it is no longer funding you. And therefore for you to come back in the system, you have no other choice but to pay out the difference of your degree if you want to start a new one, or pay for the, the courses that you would have failed to repeat and then come back within the system. This is the CNews Live Noon Update. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at CNews Live or log on to our website at ctvtt.com. There's a serious crisis in the construction sector and the August 31st deadline for payment to constructors is closing in fast. That's the word from Afra Raymond, who said it's not the first time buildings have been left hanging on for payments. And one would expect the state to not only have the funds in place to satisfy the contracts, but one would also expect the state to discharge its contractual obligations honorably. Mr. Raymond also said whilst there's a circle of responsibility to pay outstanding debts to all sectors, consideration is being given to declining national revenues. It's necessary to satisfy the normal construction debt in order to activate some kind of real interest in the public-private partnership, which is, which is very popular as a way going forward. It, 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 it can have benefits for the country. The 40 memorial service for former Prime Minister Patrick Manning took place last evening at the Southern National Academy for the Performing Arts. Friends, family and well-wishers all joined and continued to pay tribute and recognize the work done by the man who served in Parliament for over four decades and as Prime Minister for almost 15 years. His former campaign manager, Joe Newell Williams, called on members of the People's National Movement to stop blaming Mr. Manning for calling an early election in 2010. She said he did that because of pressure from within and outside the party. For the loss of the election, I stand here on this platform and say, no, I don't. I don't blame him at all. One of the things that showed he did not go out there to take anything that anybody else wanted. Hold it. Ramesh Lachmadiel compared Mr. Manning to Mohammed Ali, Nelson Mandela, and to Dr. Eric Williams. He went on to say it was because of the vision of Mr. Manning 20 years after 1990, Trinidad and Tobago saw wealth. The wealth and prosperity, the economic and financial well-being of this country was almost exclusively as a result of the vision and interventions, policies of one man, Patrick Manning. PSTT is advising customers that there has been a fiber break in the vicinity of Matura towards Toko and has resulted in interruption in some of its services. They include mobile coverage, 4G LTE coverage, fixed voice, broadband internet, and Metro TE. The company says it is working assiduously in an effort to restore services in the shortest possible time and will provide an update as soon as more information becomes available. And just to update you on the cricket, heavy rain overnight and this morning has delayed the start of day three of the third test between West Indies and India. The home was to resume play on 107 for one with Craig Braffitt on 53 and Darren Bravo on 18. Yesterday, Leon Johnson was the batsman to fall, run out for 23. This in response to India's 353 all-out on day two of the match. Ravi Chandran Ashwin and Ridman Saha both scored centuries. Time now for a look at the weather. The hurricane season continues, but there are no tropical disturbances expected for the next few days. Meanwhile, our wet season carries on, and there will likely be some moisture around despite some sunshine. Occasional showers are likely to pop up favoring the hills, particularly during the heat of the afternoon. It will feel humid today, high of 31 to 33 degrees Celsius. For mariners heading out, look for east to southeasterly winds of 10 to 50 knots with waves of 1.5 to 2 meters and easterly swells of 8 seconds. Low tide at 4.30 p.m. is followed by a high tide at 11 p.m. That's the latest weather and I'm meteorologist Ian Wallace. Thank you, Ian. C News, powered by our team of journalists and producers across the Republic and the region on television, radio and online. 
CNews, your news, your country, our job.